everyone it is a beautiful colorado day and i figured i'd change the grease on the wheels of my hiker trailer here did you know that changing the grease on the wheels of your trailer is one of the most important pieces of maintenance you can do and yet very few people do it and it's really dangerous not to if, if the grease breaks down and you don't change it the wheel can actually fall off as you're driving down the road now you can take it in and have it done. It'll cost about 50 to $75. But if you're like me, the idea of hitching up the truck, attaching it to the trailer, squeezing it out of the garage, and dropping it off at, say, the manufacturer's place for a few days is worse than the cost to me. So fortunately, this is really easy to do. You just need someone to show you what tools are needed. You only need to see it once, and you'll be doing this in nothing flat. So why don't you come along while we do this today? I'm Scruffy Golden. This is Easton, or at least it was. <laughs> let's do this. Okay, let's take a look at the tools you will need for this project. I will put a link to each of them in the description below. To change the grease itself, you will obviously need some grease, but not just any grease. So we'll talk more about that in a second. To apply the grease, you will need a grease gun and you will want some paper towel or shop rags to both catch the goop that falls to the ground, but also to wipe up as you go. Nitrile gloves are highly recommended to keep the grease off your skin. To access the grease pack, most people will want to, or will need to, remove the tires. To take the tires off, you will need a breaker bar. And to put the tire back on and tighten the lug nuts the proper amount, you will need a torque wrench. For both of these, you will need a socket that fits your wheel's lug nuts. Now some manufacturers use locking lug nuts to help deter criminals from stealing your wheels. If this is the case, you will need the wheel lock key that came with your vehicle. Now this would have been given to you by the manufacturer and they would have made a point of it. So if this doesn't sound familiar, don't worry. This just means you probably don't have locking lugs and you probably don't need to worry about it. If you need to buy a breaker bar, here's something to look out for. Make sure that the drive sockets in your socket set match the drive square on the end of the breaker bar. Most breaker bars come with a 1 half inch or 3 eighths inch drive square, which is not the same as the wrench most of us have in our home socket sets. So make sure you know what size you need before you purchase the breaker bar. Okay, let's go back to the grease for a second. You can't use just any grease. You need to get grease that was created for wheels operating under extreme conditions. This is the stuff you want. It's Lucas Oil's extra heavy duty grease, and it was specifically made for wheels operating on large agricultural equipment, trucks, and yes, off-road vehicles. It's the same price as Lucas Oil's Red and Tacky, which is another popular option, but this stuff takes things to a higher level and is definitely the stuff you want. To load the grease into the grease gun, begin by pulling the piston until it locks, then unscrew the canister from the head of the gun. Before inserting the grease into the gun, note that there is a cap at one end of the tube and an old timey pop top on the other. Remove the cap and discard. This will expose the grease inside the tube. Insert that end of the tube into the canister first. Pull the pop top from the other end of the tube and screw the canister back into the head of the gun. Push the release button and simultaneously push down on the piston. Now squeeze the trigger until grease begins to come out of the nozzle. This could take several pumps, so don't get discouraged. Some vehicles require moving the tire in order to get to the grease. To do so, loosen all of the lugs while the wheels are still firmly on the ground. A breaker bar makes short and easy work of this even if the lugs are rusty or have been overly tightened. And this job is made even easier if you situate the breaker bar so that you're pushing down on it rather than pulling up on it. Once you've loosened all the lugs, jack the vehicle off the ground using your favorite method, and set the wheel aside. Removing the wheel on my trailer exposes a soft rubber gasket that protects the grease pack. Now you can use tools to take it out, but usually your fingers are all that are needed. Finally, let's do what we came to do. Take the nozzle of your grease gun and gently press it onto the grease zerk. You should feel a soft click. Press the trigger of the grease gun to begin pumping clean grease into the wheel. As you do, old discolored grease will ooze out and you will definitely want something on the ground to catch the goop as it falls. Turn the wheel occasionally as you are pumping so that new grease is distributed evenly into the wheel and old grease is pushed evenly out. You will start to see clean grease oozing out and it should be easily distinguishable from the old stuff. Keep pumping until mostly new grease is coming out and don't be surprised if this takes an entire tube for each wheel. When you are done, 
the nozzle will be under pressure on that grease zerk and it will not come off as easily as it clicked on. When taking it off, it helps if you wiggle it side to side rather than just pulling it straight back. Regardless, don't be afraid to muscle it a little bit. When you are done, clean up any excess before putting the rubber gasket back on. Putting the tire back on the vehicle can be the most challenging part of this whole process, especially if you have big off-road tires that weigh more than you do. Now, I'm not implying that's the case here, I'm just saying. Here's an easy way to get the tires back onto the hub though. Start by grabbing a lever of some sort. I grabbed a shovel I had handy, but anything will do, a piece of pipe, a piece of PVC, whatever. Place it directly underneath the hub and center it. Now roll the tire onto that pole and then walk the bottom of the tire back into the hub so that the tire leans away from the vehicle. Holding the tire with one hand, grab the lever with the other. Now simply lift the tire onto the spindles by lifting the lever. Twisting the lever will even turn the tire if the holes don't line up with the spindles right off the bat. It really is that easy. Put the lugs back on the wheel and hand tighten while the wheel is still off the ground, using a star pattern as you do so. You can use your hand or a tool to do this. I start by finger tightening and then I use the breaker bar to tighten a little further. When you are done, lower the wheels back to the ground. You want to tighten the lugs while the wheel is on the ground, but you need to tighten them the right amount. And to do that, you need a torque wrench. There are two sets of numbers on the shaft of the wrench. Newton meters is there if you need the metric version, but in the US, we want the set labeled foot-pounds. Most wheels are torqued from 80 to 135 foot-pounds, so you will want to check with the manufacturer of your vehicle to determine the correct torque for your situation. For my extreme off-road model, Hiker Trailer recommends 120 foot-pounds of torque. So how do we do that? You've already found the numbers on the shaft of the wrench, but notice there are numbers wrapped around the handle as well. The numbers on the shaft are the whole numbers and the numbers on the handle are tenths. If you turn the handle clockwise until the edge just reaches the line next to 120, you will notice that the zero is also lined up with the center line. This means that you have 120.0 foot-pounds of tension on the ratchet. You are now ready to tighten your wheels with the torque wrench. Take the socket you use to loosen the lugs and put it on your torque wrench. Tighten the lug nuts by turning them clockwise. When you reach the proper torque, you will feel the wrench give a little and you will hear a solid click. Again, it helps tremendously if you situate the wrench so that you're pushing down, and like before, you want to tighten the lugs in a star pattern. Once all of the lugs have been tightened to the proper amount, you are good to go. It's always a good idea to check the wheels after driving 25 to 50 miles to make sure nothing has loosened, and don't forget to store your torque wrench with the handle set to zero. If you store it under tension, the spring inside will weaken and the wrench will no longer apply the proper amount of torque. So that's all there is to it. Without filming, I was able to change out the grease on the other wheel, including taking it off and putting it back on in about 15 minutes, a little bit less. So it really doesn't take long and it's super easy once you've done it once. And uh, so yeah, that's all there is. If you found this video useful and you'd like to see more like it, please hit the subscribe button and give me a big thumbs up. Otherwise, live without compromise and I'll see you out there. Easton, are they still there? Oh good, you are still here. Uh, the reason I say that's good is because I missed a couple of things in the video. The first is, and I can't believe I missed this, how frequently should you change the grease on your wheels? Well, the answer is somewhere between five and 10,000 trailer miles. If you use the Red and Tacky, I wouldn't go more than 5,000 miles. And if you use that heavy duty stuff I mentioned, I wouldn't go less than 5,000 miles. You could probably even go 10,000 miles. The other thing is, after this video was finished, I showed it to a bunch of people at Hiker Trailer. And uh, Rob Reeve, the owner of Hiker Trailer, mentioned that there's a bladder on the back of the wheel which can get blown out if you press pump too hard for the to, to get the grease in there if you do that i get the impression it's a horrific mess it's grease all over your wheel your axle your hubs in your brake calibers i get the impression it's pretty nasty so this is easy though to avoid just press hard enough to make the grease move out the front of the wheel smoothly that's it Turning, <laughs> turning that wheel will also uh, help it move if it's a little bit thick and stuck. So that's it. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Goodbye for now.